We're losing! Teamwork, guys. More teamwork. They're burying us alive! Well, shit. Jeez, Louie. Honey, don't you want to beat those bastards? We're gonna be winners. What's the matter? You got nothing left inside, huh? Because you're training like a damn bum, you know that. Screw them. What are I you doing? Dead. What are people doing? Is this early access to. Hey, let me tell you something, bro. Get out there now and do the best you can. Well, look at these faces. Sorry to ruin your Sunday night. What is it? May 23rd. Hell of a day. Weekend before Memorial Day. day. Yeah. We all are wearing red red backgrounds tonight. For some reason, we coordinated ourselves. But welcome, everybody. Episode 164 of the Bad Fodder Figures podcast. Wow. Um, I think I, I think I threw things off by sending a, a group text today saying that I can't record next weekend. Not tonight. I said, I'll see you tonight. But I sent a message out early saying, next weekend is no good for me. And now we don't know where Eric is. It's the detail. All about the details, Matt. The details. Eric's in the future. Eric's in the future. He only Glove read box that- aiming is the future. Right. So maybe Eric will show up. Maybe he won't. If he does not show up, it's on the shoulders of me because I sent out a text message again saying, next weekend, we're not recording. But tonight, yeah, we are recording. I should check. Are we recording? And yeah. we are recording. We are here. This is live, right? <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, also want to, I also want to check and make sure I am recording the podcast, which I think I am. That'd be nice. No. Yeah. So... Hell of a thing. How are you, Matt? Doing okay. Doing okay. Doing okay. Yeah. Word, word to the wise out there is a pro tip. Um, if you order a T-shirt from our website, okay, yes. the merchandise, yes. okay, get a size larger than okay. what you think you need. And my cat here agrees. Apparently, uh, I ordered a large, which normally I wear a large T-shirt. Okay. Uh, I should have gotten extra large because if it, unless I mean unless you get a body like a goddess, okay, it's six foot or six foot, he, uh, <laughs> yeah, six pack abs, you know, yep. and the chiseled chest and everything, be perfect. Me, not so much. Not okay, so much. not so much. So get a size larger if you if you uh, get a t shirt, please. But it is nice thick quality though. It, it, I am happy about that. I'll give it to Barb to wear. Sure this the great, se- yeah. Is this the second one or this the first one? Is this the this- first one? All right. Okay. This is the first one. So I'm going, to, I'm going to order another one. This size is larger. Okay. Get and uh, do that. But mm-hmm. it, it, but nice thick quality. Nice nice uh, print on it. Thread, and everything. The, the thread count is impressive. Thread print is very very impressive. <laughs> yes, it's a great T-shirt. I would go out and buy one. Buy it. People should buy them. But, yeah, Bitly slash uh-huh. BFF merch. Bitly. There you go. BFF merch. The cheapest yeah. price is turn if you don't like us, turn if you, if we said something wrong on the show, just turn it inside out and you got yourself a nice like Matt says, <laughs> high thread count shirt. Yeah. It's wow. high quality shirt. So the weather here, Matt, this weekend was fabulous. Lots of lots mm. of uh warm weather. Birthday parties. You know, I'm 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 almost pining for the COVID days because I had two birthday parties. You know, see what happened? We got used to this solitude, and now all of a sudden the floodgates are open with the uh, with the celebrations. So I had a, a birthday party yesterday for my son and my mother. Yeah. My mother, my mother turned 72, and my, wow. my middle son, uh, 13. So we had a little party here. And then today uh, went to a, uh, a barbecue up the street for my neighbor whose son was having his birthday. But <clears throat> I got I came to the source, Matt. I needed to talk to you about grilling. Okay, I had to do oh. some gr- grilling this week. And tell me what I'm doing wrong, right? Anytime that I'm cooking hot dogs or sausages, okay? 
everything looks fabulous on the grill. Very, very tasty. You know, I'm cooking it to the temp. You know, the the you know, vision wise, everything looks looks to be okay. satisfactory, right? But as soon as I take them off the grill, right, everything shrinkage. Like you know, like picture like George Costanza, right? Everything is like getting like it shrivel. It kind of like shrivels up, gets wrinkles. I don't. It's not appealing. You, you know, put you, you, you're, you're slaving over this grill, and you got this family that's just looking for this food, and they see these plump sausages and these nice pearl hot dogs that look plump and delicious, and then I take them off the grill, and they shriveled up like you know a senior citizen dick. You know, like what the fuck is going uh, on? <laughs> So here's what you do, okay? No. It's a little more work, okay? And it takes a little more coordination, but when they're nice and plump and that eye candy, you know, you can see it. It's looking yeah. good. You say, all right, come get your dogs, and you serve them right off the grill, yeah. okay? You don't put them in a metal tray. You don't put them in wherever and take them over to a serving station or whatever for people to go through and pick up, you know, go through the line. Nope. All right, get your plate. Come on over. All right, what do you want? You want you want that dog? You want that one? You want that mat? You want that brat? All right, here you go. There you go. Nice and plump, juicy off the grill. That way, you know, it's still appealing. It yeah, looks so, appealing to them. So Maniac says uh, grilling or smoking. So I don't know if anybody grills. I don't know if anybody just – can you smoke a hot dog or smoke a sausage? I don't you know can't, but that's dumb. No. Yeah, so I'm gr – Gr this guy over yeah. here is definitely grilling. I have the, yeah, just a grilling, regular yeah. – just a regular, you know, propane grilling situation. He says, I need a thermometer. Now, th I need a thermometer for hot dogs and sausages? No, you don't. No, okay. you don't need I'm a not, thermometer for hot dogs and sausages. I'm not grilling any, um, you know, steaks over here or fucking, you know, pork, you know, big, you know, hun hunking slabs of meat. Just regular, you know, uh, sausages and hot dogs from like, the grocery store. Like, like, like ballpark franks, you know, ballpark franks and some <laughs> Italian sausages or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the ballpark franks, you're cooking them. When they start to split, they're done. They're good. Yeah, yeah. They're ready to go. You know, same thing with your sausages. Start to split. You know, the juices are coming out and everything. All right, come get your dog right here. Take it off. No. Yeah. You know. So it's like yeah. when the, it's when the hot is like the hot weather, and then it goes into the house and hits like the central air. It's like. Mm. <laughs> just, well, it just yeah. I mean, it's like it just, those, like, that. that it's like those uh, Wizard of Oz, like the witch's feet, you know, underneath the house that landed on it. I mean, just like, <laughs> just like shrivels up. Yeah. Um, now, you can, like, sometimes, you know, the hot dogs, you know, you, if you, you can kind of, like, before, you know, they're done in the grill, you can take them off because they're, they're still kind of, like, cooking. And then take them in and say, all right, get it now. Come get it. Come get them while they're hot. You know. I, but the best way is just right off the grill. Say, all right, here you go. Boom, 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 boom. You know, but I understand if you got a lot of people in that and you're like, you know, get those metal trays or whatever, and you're filling up the trays with sausage and stuff for like a buffet type of line. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you're going to get that. Okay. That's going, that's, that's going to happen. You're going to get the shrinkage. You're going to get the, uh, witch's feet. Yeah. Yeah. So Maniac says Italian sausage, I cooked to temp. A little overdone. What's that? Lit is overdone for me. Um, I don't know. I had my father over here who wanted everything, you know, fucking like a hockey puck. You know what I mean? Same. You know, my mother, That's and, my mother and my mother and father, you know, if they see any pink in their hamburgers, it's like the end of the world, oh. you know. Uh, get a little pink in your hamburger. They they think mad cow disease and a lot of disease in yeah. ground beef. You know. You know, I I, <laughs> I grew up some steaks. Yeah. Friday night, you know. And they walk off the and, grill. Huh? They walking off the grill. Just they were about, so... just about, just about. Even Barb, though, was like, "Man, these are these are good, tender, and they just melt in your mouth." I said, "You goddamn right. That's what when you cook a steak right. That's what you get. You know, you don't need no fucking a one sauce. <clears throat> All right, you cook these the uh, that nice pink red center, <sighs> so I, juicy. Mm. You think I have food issues? My father, everything's got to be like a hockey puck and no condiments." Now he was was he in the military? Yeah, Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah, because both Eric and Vic Joe talk about this. They want their shit done, and I th I I think they both said because like when he was in in the uh, military, everything was like burnt, so they got got I guess used to it. 
So they my neighbors burnt, like that. Probably burnt it because they didn't probably know what type of meat it was and God know where it came from. How well, that could how be. How long it's been sitting around. Cook that you know? shit through. <laughs> Cook it through. <laughs> yeah. My neighbor's the same way. He wants his shit done. Done, burnt. You know, we, we go to like, I don't know, say Texas Roadhouse, okay, which is, you know, he'll get a steak well done there. It's like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? And he douses it with A1. It's like, you know, you don't need A1 sauce if you get the steak cooked properly. I was like, I'm going to take you to Jeff Ruby's sometime, you know, where we could, and I dare you to order a well done steak from there. They're going to kick your ass out. They're going to say, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> get, go, leave, you know. A steak's <sighs> probably a little different than ground beef. Yeah, I mean, ground beef is probably wise to get it a little bit more done because it's yeah. ground beef. You know, all the edges are exposed, okay? Yeah. So you want to kind of get it a little bit more done, but it's okay to have a little pink. You don't want it bloody red, okay? No, no. But it's nice to have a little pink in your ground beef. So that was my weekend, serving up uh, shriveled up hot dogs and, you know. Did anyone say anything? No, I just looked at him like, this isn't appealing to me. I didn't, look, I didn't like the look of it. I was like, what the hell is going on with these things? Yeah, and if you can next time, Mike, just serve them right off the grill. That way you can say, people can point, oh, I want that one a little bit more done, or leave that one on for me, you know. Just yeah. right off the grill, man. They're plump, juicy. Well, next time it's just yeah. going to be for me. That's, I can count on one hand the number of times people come over. So. And that's I'm true. Only, I, I'm, that's and true. I'm the only one that eats meat over here. So if no one else <laughs> is here and it's just going to be me, I'm trying to prevent having shriveled up dogs because they don't taste as good. They don't, for some reason, that they're just not as plump anymore. You see, you get that visual thing. You saw that, and you see that doesn't look good. So now I'm actually thinking it doesn't taste good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no you need it yeah, right off the grill, dude. Right off the grill. That's that's the best way to do it. You're, well, that's the way you get it at Fenway Park, you know, when you buy the sausages behind the Green Monster. You know, all those sausage carts that are there. Mm -hmm. They just got them right on the grill for you, you know. Yeah, there. fresch. Fresh, fresh, and you get the onions and peppers and stuff oh, yeah, for them yeah. too. All the sautéed onions oh, and peppers. Man. Oh, so good. Sausage guy. Oh. Mm, so good, so good. Well, Matt, we're in trouble if you haven't heard the news oh. by now. Spotify is going to be enabling auto transcripts of podcasts. Good luck <laughs> translating what the fuck I say. <laughs> that's that's what I'm getting at here. Uh, Spotify announced multiple updates to make its app more accessible across iOS and Android, including a beta version of a podcast transcription feature. The company says it will start auto-transcribing certain exclusive and original shows over the coming weeks as part of a beta rollout. But eventually, the, the company says the goal is to enable transcripts across all podcasts on Spotify. So we should just really see, um, play, you know, Matt's terrible topics. And what we need, <laughs> this is what we need to do for a segment is we do a show with Matt's terrible topics so, and, let, and let it transcribe that, right? And huh. if we're in such a way that you can, can you copy the text from the transcription and then put that into like Google Translate? Or something oh, like Jesus that. Christ. So it automates, so it reads it back to us just to, <laughs> <laughs> to hear what it's going to say. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a hell of an idea. Yeah. That sounds like a hell of an idea. We need to try that. Oh, my God. I can't believe they're doing it. It's a good luck to it. Well, I mean, it's a big push, you know, good for them. It's a big push all around the industry, podcast and video games with accessibility. So last week was. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah was a big accessibility uh, celebration week, you know, calling out and recognizing things that could be better or things that are going well. And uh, so I think that's where the, the genesis of the story comes from. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, if more people will follow suit then. Good luck to them, I say. I t tip of the hat. Yeah. So good um, I had an incredibly busy work week. So, so, so tired pretty much every day after work. Very little gaming this week, but we can get into uh, what we've been playing here in just a minute. Um, I noticed Vault of Glass came out this week. Or yesterday, right? Yesterday, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah everyone was going for their world's first yesterday. And people got to be, you got to be what, 1,300 score? 1,300. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, 1,300 light level. Is that on your agenda at all? Bolt of Glass, I've never done a raid. I've never done a raid. I would like to. 
you know, I mean, obviously with uh, um, El Resto um, right. clan, you know, it's a possibility. <clears throat> but I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm scared too. I really am. You know, I, I had the opportunity a couple of times with the last raid, came out to do it. And I was like, guys, I don't know. I would not know what I'm doing. You guys would really have to carry me through and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, well, yeah, I mean, you would have to have some idea what's going on. You know, I mean, I've watched videos on, you know, Goth played this, you know, did it all the time. So I watched him, so I kind of had an idea, but it, still, I would be dead. All the time. I was like, oh, I'm dead again. I'm dead again, mm-hmm. probably. So what's the, uh, what's the hour type commitment on something like that? Is that like two to four hours, four to six, six to eight? First time going in, it's a good. I mean, from what I've seen, people do it's like good four to five hours mm-hmm. for the first time. That's but a- once you go in and you like know all the tricks and all the secrets and and how it works, it's two hour, maybe mm-hmm. one hour, two hour going mm-hmm. through. I would imagine. I mean, five, six, four to five hours. That's at least six piss breaks for you, if not more. I mean, you have I'm no Eric. Ar- you have no Eric. No Eric here tonight, so you have no way to get up. And you're just going on the floor down there. I'm sorry. I got I got an empty cup down here. I can you know, if you hear it, it'll you know it'll I got, drizzle um, or something. <laughs> with we're having the work done in the house here, and so I have no half bathrooms on my um, first floor. So if I got to take a piss, I'm down here working or I'm gaming or something. I got to go up two flights of stairs now. I got to go all the way to the top floor of my house. To go to the back. So yeah, paying that shit. Yeah, paying that shit then. Told told Lynn to get me one of those, you know, Wizenators jugs. They sell it like sell it like Walgreens or something like that for guys that are on the road, you know, and gotta take take a piss. The Wizenator or something like that. You know, some of these truckers, they've got a tube connected and they got a hole drilled through the bottom of their floorboard where it just goes on and out in the road, where they just go down the highway, they're just pissing down a tube down. At the bottom of the truck. It's a hell of a thing, Mike. It is. What would they think of next? Ingenuity. Hey, whatever to keep on the road, I suppose. You know? Whatever. Keep on trucking. Man. Keep on trucking, as they say. Well, you have to get back to us, Matt, if you can get to Vault of Glass. You're going to get like one of those like uh, bumper stickers for your, your Xbox, like around here. There's a big Mount Washington, and so if your car, if you're taking your family up Mount Washington, they give you a sticker. This car climbed Mount Washington, right? And they put that bumper sticker on their car. So if you've if you've completed Vault of Glass, you can get a a, a sticker for your Xbox. I'll put this, it on my Xbox. This console that. has conquered Vault of Glass. There we go. Yeah. Actually, it should say the clan I'm in. Conquered Vault of Glass. I was just there for the ride. <laughs> I, was, I was just along for the ride. I was a passenger. <laughs> exactly. I got, I just stood back and kept asking, are we there yet? Are we there yet? You were that yeah. kid in the road trips, weren't you? I was. I was. I'm hungry. I gotta go to the bathroom. Are we there yet? I'm bored. Can we do something? Why did Alexa just go off? Alexa just said something. I couldn't understand I what you were trying to say. Just like Spotify is not going to understand what the hell I'm trying to say. <laughs> <clears throat> well, let's get into what we've been playing here, sir. Have you had a busy week in the gaming realms? Yeah. Actually, you know, between actually, you know, real life gaming with baseball, which I got this upcoming week again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, fucking baseball games. Um, I know I, but, speaking of that, I did not, you know, when I, when I sent the text message, Again, the reason Eric is not here. Um, I was going to say, also in my message, hey, I, I can't record next weekend, but if you want to do something during the week, and I got the word week like like halfway typed out, and I was like, he's going to be at knot hole, so I'm not even going to go down that road. So I was just like, yeah, no show next week. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that, because, yes, that is very true. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Um, but besides baseball games, uh, Destiny Two, the, the new season going through, doing those activities. Um, <clears throat> their their new public activity, which is pretty easy to do, pretty enjoyable actually. It's not that bad. I ran a bunch of Crucible matches 
the other day, and I ran a bunch last night. I tried to do a bunch last night, but my controller kept fucking up. Now, what's last going night. on? Just talk to me about this controller <laughs> issue. What's going? On? We talked about the Xbox woes last week, and so you you got the controller updated and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, I did updates to the controller, to the headset, and the headset seems to be working a little bit better. Okay, I used it last week. I think what last week you and I played a little bit. And you said I sounded okay. Yep. Um, and it didn't cut out or anything like that. It sounded great. Um, but my controller last night, I'm sitting here playing and that, and right off the bat, it just started. It just felt, I don't know, sluggish. Okay, and as I was playing throughout the night, it got worse. To where all of a sudden I'm sitting there, you know, running, and all of a sudden it's like running to the left when I want to go to the right. It was going opposite what I wanted to do. I'd be running, and all of a sudden turn me around, go the other way. I'd be looking up, looking down, all this stuff. And it's like, what the hell is going on? There's delayed responses. It kept disconnecting. I kept having to reconnect it and stuff. So I was like, fuck it. I fuck this. I'm, I'm done playing, I guess. And this is the same um, controller that you spiked or threw across the room for it yeah. takes two, right? That, that that's a good point. That is yes, this is the same controller that I threw across the room playing um it takes two. So that might have something to do with it, maybe. Right. I don't know. I might have jarred a bolt loose or something. Mm-hmm. But I went last night I ordered a new yeah, controller. Show it off, from- show it off. Ooh, Vanna mm-hmm. White style. Give us mm-hmm. give us all the angles, Matt, all the juicy angles. A new oh. controller. I picked oh. it up today. Look at that. Oh, Best Buy. I'm getting stuck. They didn't have the neon green. I wanted the neon green. That was out of stock. So the next best thing was this blue. Um, so I'll get the blue one. You know, mm-hmm. Something different. And how so, has that been? Has that been perfect or have issues? Fine so far. I played a couple hours uh, this afternoon with it. But this, this morning, I played with the old one. No issues. It was like nothing. Like it's like, hey, nothing's wrong. I'm working fine, dude. What do you buy a new controller for? But this one here connected flawlessly. No issues so far. I'm curious to see if it, uh, you know, what happens. I would not be throwing this one across did, the room. And did you update that one? This one, yeah. As soon as I, as soon as I uh, connected it, it came up update available, and it, you know, updated on Mac and stuff. So. Um, but this one, yeah, this one here updated the other day, and I was like, man, what the fuck? It, it just, oh, maybe, maybe chucking this thing has something to do with the issues I'm having. I, I mean, I'm sure that's a possibility. I don't know. I don't know how precision these things are, but anyways, we'll see how the new one works out if I have issues with that. So, but anyway, Destiny 2, doing that, some more MOB the show. Uh, playing uh, my Road to the Show characters, both my pitcher and my right fielder. Having fun with that. Great game. Played a couple of actual Reds games with it. Um, more solitaire collection during lunchtime, you know, while I'm at lunch at work. You know, just fire that real quick. Play some play some cards and stuff. Um, <clears throat> what else did I play this week? That's... I mean, that's the big stuff right there, really. That there, I'm looking forward to Bob Mutant coming out. No, coming to, I pre ordered that, got downloaded already. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. I'm looking that forward just, to that. get into that in just a minute. Yeah, um, okay. No movies, no shows. Did you have you had a time to watch uh, Army of the Dead? The new, film? no, I have not. No, unfortunately, I have not. No, I want to watch that. Yeah, I, I do too. No, just to see the stupidity of it, right? <laughs> I'm kind of like kind a, of, yeah, good movie. Just lose yourself in, right? Yeah, just the the absurdity of it is maybe the word I yeah. want to use. Yeah, yeah, a no care movie to where you just sit in there and enjoy yourself with a big old box of popcorn. Yeah. Um, let's see. For this week, for me, gaming wise, um, trying to think a little bit of Returnal. You yeah, know, what I did is I got the uh, the television here, the new thing. So I was just testing out some stuff. I didn't go on a deep run, but I just wanted to see it here on the, on the new television. Looks fabulous. So uh, just uh, just dipped my toes into the Returnal waters this week. Nothing, nothing big to report. Um, but other than that, it was just really um, Mass Effect One. 
the le- yeah, how's legend- it going? legendary edition. So I reported last week that you know the game lacked the violent speed and momentum that it was an unathletic game. Um, and this week we had a tune-up with the Sherpa, and you were you were there, you were present for that. We had a um, was that Wednesday night or Tuesday night? I can't remember. Probably Wednesday, I would think. Yeah, I think it's Wednesday. It could have been Tuesday. I don't know. Um, but we had a meeting of the minds, and <laughs> um, so Chase was there in chat, and uh, Maniac was there as well, and we were talking about it, and he said, "I well, I was making a complaint that I was in this area, and I kept dying, and that my two, my squad, the two guys there with me, were like the limpest dicks ever. They were just fucking laying down, doing nothing. They they were of no use to me. I was like, what, why am I leveling up these characters with all these, uh, assigning them all these points and they're not doing anything. They're just looking up at the sky and they're just, they're just getting killed. You know, they're just being sponges for bullets and they're not, they're not helping me at all. So uh, Chase says to go into the settings and I think it was like automatic. I had them on set to defensive. Yeah, and you had to change them to like offensive or some shit like that. I think, yeah, automatic. So they would then automatically use their own attributes that you've assigned them. So ever since yeah. then, I, uh, I'm so mad at those two guys that they are off the squad. They have been thrown out of the team. And oh, no. I'll say this in air quotes and copyright symbol. The space bitches are now with <laughs> me. You know, Chase and, um, and, and Scar. Um Scar refers to them as the space bitches. I have them, the two women, with me now. Space sluts. I was gonna. I was happy with bitches, but um, <laughs> I, I don't have no. I have no. Um, I haven't had any exploits with them yet. To okay. to to get into that adjective, it, it takes a while. It, it takes, takes while. some building up. So, like I said, didn't have much of a gaming appetite this week, just being totally zonked after work, after dinner, after giving my son, you know, a uh, shower, a bedtime, all that. You know, I'd come down here with the best intentions to play, and I would just be sitting on the recliner with my phone, and I'd just like, I can't get up to turn stuff on. And I'd be dozing off, and I'd just like, fuck, I'm <laughs> going to bed. But I did hang in with Mass Effect a little bit this week. I got the squad up and running, got the space ladies with me, and um, yeah, we we went and did the like this uh, prisoner rescue or this missing mm-hmm. person. You meet this guy in the Citadel Tower. He tells you his brother's missing. You go to this you know this area. You find him and he's dead. Blah blah blah. Um, but uh, you know until you find him, you got to f- do all these battles or whatever. And the women that were with me held their own, and it was it was much uh, much easier than my first venture into the hot labs and everything like that. And, of course, speaking to Chase this week, a.k.a. the Sherpa, uh, he quickly told me that I should not have done that mission right away, that I should have gone and rescued some girl because then she would have helped fight her mother or something like that. And I did this stuff out of order, and I I didn't know that. I just said, all right, I'm just going to pick and do this shit. So, anywho... Um, making some progress. I really, you know, to get back to Biomutant, I really, really want to finish Mass Effect 1 before I dive into Biomutant, but just my luck, Matt, I mean, it sounds like we got a home run on our hands here, right? It sounds like this is a slam dunk, no-brainer, great fucking game, right? By all accounts of everybody's sort of comments online, like, can't wait to tell you more about it. You know, these people have already played it, and they're saying, and you're like, you know, Hey, yeah, like, you know, my site has done it and we got screenshots and we got impressions and we can't wait to tell you more about it next week. And usually when you see something like that, they'll give you a little hint of which way they're leaning. In this case, you're getting smiley faces, you're getting thumbs up, you know, you, you get, you're getting the positive vibes. Uh, the game was on Clueless Gamer with Conan and JB Smoove was on there playing it. So, yeah, I, I think the uh, embargo lifts. Tomorrow? I think tomorrow, yeah. So, should get a lot more information tomorrow afternoon. You know, going into Tuesday, obviously, when you can start playing the game. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. 
it looks great. I've been I have been look a lot into I've been looking to like the different classes and what they can do and the different perks and stuff that each class has. No. Because I, I like to, you know, the magic, you know, being like a mage or something like that. Yeah, can you and there's a class. Best, can you give us your mess, best magic or mage pose? Are you, are you willing to do that on camera? <laughs> <laughs> See, I just threw a fucking fireball. Do you see? Look at that. <laughs> Instant. Look at that. It worked. Went right through that microphone and hit him in the face. All, uh, over, <laughs> all <laughs> over your face. Like a glazed donut. Oh, um, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I, 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 said, I looked up to different classes. and you Did you pre-order it, Mike? I have to pre-order it, yeah, because I want to get some of that pre-order bonus or whatever. I'm deciding yeah. where I want to play it. I'm hearing... That um, it runs better on the Series X than it does on the PS5, but eventually this, you know, uh, the PS, you know, PS5 and Series, there will be a Series X and PS5 version at some point. Yeah, right now it's it's all, yeah, uh, regular Xbox and PS4. Yeah. I mean, it'll play on the new gen, but it's not optimized 100%. So, it, so yeah. on Xbox Series X, it's running 4K 60 frames per second native. On really? P on PS5, it's running 1080p, 60 frames native upscale to 4K. Okay. Um, yeah. And then this, you know, now with my new television and everything here, slash monitor, I could also play it on PC if I wanted to. But getting back to my work weeks, just been knocking me on the ass. Um, and again, why I don't do a lot of PC gaming is by the time I get done with work and everything, I just want to be in the recliner and play. So. Long story short, I probably will not get it on PC, although I could probably find some cheaper deals on PC right now for it. But I think I will be getting it on Series X, and I do need to pre-order it. You do? Because apparently there's a, cl a mercenary class that comes with the pre-order. And a few, quite a few people have said that is a really cool class. It kind of like combines a lot of everything. And it... And that was the reason some people were turned off by the game is that they were putting a class behind a paywall. That the only way you could get that class was by pre-ordering. I don't know how that's a paywall. I mean, if you're going to get the game, I mean, it's not paywall if you're pre-ordering the game, right? It's not like you paid extra for that. I mean, you just pre-ordered the game and you got that. That's not behind a paywall. You're still paying for the game. Yeah, if people don't have things to be upset about, then... You know. that, that's, that is true. Right. That is true. But so. yeah, I'm super excited. I'm, you know, you told me your little, you know, I don't know if you want to reveal this to everybody. I don't want to give out your secrets in life, Matt, here. But, you know, you said you wanted to develop a fat raccoon character. And I'm hoping that, um, you know, the, the lovely um, high um, thread count Hawaiian shirt you have on right now uh, would be, you know, some attire that you can wear with your fat raccoon. I and I hope I could buy this attire too. If if there's attire like this, well, I will buy it. <clears throat> One thing I've I learned and I found out, okay, is that at first you can't create a character exactly how you want to look because when you're going through and you're choosing the um, the stats like your strength, intellect, stamina, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it changes the way he looks. Okay, at first. So if you go for like a um, Character with high strength, he's going to be, you know, buff Stop. looking. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, like you, Mike. You know, he's going to be buff, yeah. buff looking guy. Okay, if yeah. you go someone with the intellect, they got like a bigger head. And <laughs> so, anyways, it kind of when you're going through and you're choosing their attributes, it changes the way they look. But they said, don't worry about that because down the road, you can customize your character to look however you want to look. You can change. At first, you can change your colors whatever stripes how you want them to look okay at first and that but their body shape you kind of gotta go with the flow at first mm -hmm. but like you get to a certain point okay to where that doesn't matter and you can change their body shape and still have the stats stacked where you want them to you know what i mean yep yep so well i gotta tell you matt it feels good to hear you that you're excited for this game because certainly um when maniac and i saw it at packs many years ago i've been talking about it off and on so a it's showing me that you're listening to me and b uh -huh. um you know 
It's I think it's it's good to see a new IP getting interest. You know, mm-hmm. it's tough it's tough for a new IP to sink its teeth into this industry, right? And um so yeah, so they've been working on it. it's a it's a twenty person team, a small team. Um, they've been working hard on it. They were quiet for a long, long while after announcing it in 2017. So, um, the THQ must have some, some advertising dollars behind it to get it on Conan's, uh, clueless gamer segment. You know, I want to get that, that, you know, we, we kid around here with the uncharted four, the uncharted three, um, collector's edition that you got, right? (laughs) But have you yeah. seen the th- have you seen the four hundred dollar collector's edition they got? If you go on no. Best Buy on their app, it's a nice it's a nice action. Um, you know, it's your character fighting some like big boss or something like that. It's pretty sweet looking, but I don't know about four hundred dollars sweet looking for a, you know a new IP a franchise. But I've been seeing um, you know on Reddit following the the uh, the channel over there. Some people are already doing cosplay and stuff, so. It seems like it's it's it has captured the attention wow. of the gaming world this week. You know, the last couple of weeks, people are talking about it. So I think, um, I think it's going to do well, which is cool. right, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, I don't know about four hundred dollars. Cool on eBay is for on eBay. He's got two hundred dollars right here on eBay. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. You're I don't looking know if it's at the, legit or not. You're looking at the one with like it's like a bear or something, right? They're fighting the. the no, the, wait a minute. That's. Am I looking at the right one? No, okay, no wait. The I'm Atomic Edition, three hundred ninety nine dollars. The Atomic yeah. Edition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. That that's yeah, that's even really cool. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I'm looking for it. The big thing is, is something different coming out, right? You know, to play something fresh, something new, bright, vibrant colors. You know, I don't stuff think like it's that. An incredibly long game. I, I'm seeing people already finished it. So this may be in like the 30, 40 hour range, somewhere in there. It's still good size. Yeah, as long as there's, I mean, I, I. I don't know too much about it. I don't know if there's like replayability with this. You know, if you go through, I guess, different classes or whatever, or just replay right. open world type stuff, or I haven't heard anything about DLC planned or anything for it. Is it, is it multiplayer? Is there a co op at all? I don't think Just so. single player? Okay. Just single player? Yeah. Hmm. Yes. I mean, so, I... so reviews are going to hit tomorrow. Again, people just jumping in here, listening to us or watching us. We're talking about Biomutant. Uh, THQ is the publisher. It's on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Um, PS4, Xbox One X, enhanced probably, but um, the series, the series versions, and the PS5 will be coming later this year at some point, like everything else. But yeah, I'm excited, like yourself. You know, something new, something fresh, a different IP. I always try to like to support the new IPs. So that's how the you know, the industry will flourish, you know, new things. But, um, you know, man, hopefully your jinx is up here. You know, you had the Cyberpunk pre-order. You had the Anthem pre-order. Um, so. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> or otherwise, three, three strikes, you're out. Three, you know what? I Then I'm learned a lesson, and I no longer will be – doing this type of bullshit it's funny i tweeted that you know on twitter the other day i pre-ordered it and jeremy comes back says thanks now that means it's going to be free on game pass (laughs) epic game store and stream and playstation now and all this stuff i'm in the (laughs) fucking cutout bin (laughs) by by fourth of july it'll be in the cutout bin (laughs) two dollars uh, oh, we'll see no. what happens. Reviews hit tomorrow. I'm anxious to check everything out. You know, I'm trying to go in blind to it, so I know that they, the their social media team has been doing a great job of keeping people up to date and giving you information. Very much so, like um, Insomniac's doing with the Ratchet and Clank game. Almost too much information at this point for me. I want to go in dark and be surprised. Every time I see something, I scroll by it quickly on my feed so I don't get uh, 
anything spoiled for me. But you know how all these sites have the ten best thing, ten most important things you should know before playing the game. Before playing, things yeah. we wished we knew before playing. Yeah. Oh, you know that. You know that's a love hate thing. You know sometimes like yeah, it'd be good to know that, but sometimes like the game like this, I want to go in kind of blind and choose what I want to do. That's that's why I, I went in first, kind of look at the different classes. You know. And what they could do, kind of learn about that, and then kind of learn it myself. Okay, well, all right, let's just kind of go through and play it that way. Now, I'm I'm kind of torn too because uh, Goth has got he can start streaming it tomorrow, mm. and so I'm not sure if I'm going to watch his stream or not because I don't know if I want to have anything spoiled or not or what. But I'm, I might I might go and watch it just to kind of see what's going on there like see oh excuse me i don't know if it's a like store like story spoilers that can be ruined for you like i don't like i said again i haven't been zeroed in laser focused on what it is because i don't want it to be ruined but is this game more about the battles and the exploration and the encounters than the story beats you know what i mean so I, that's what i'm that's what i'm curious about like if you watched him like would it just be would it just a just combat and it's really not spoiling anything or could there be major story points that could get ruined for you? I don't know how the story is for this game. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think anything story-wise would get spoiled, you know? It's not like it goes to Tsushima or you know, Grand so Theft like, Auto type of thing. Yeah. Where, where it's going to get, you know, it's like, oh, fuck, well, I know what's going on, so there's no reason to play this game. It's almost like uh, Destiny then, like you could, you don't feel like anything's really getting spoiled by watching people playing Destiny shit, but yeah, right. like you can like that, spoil right. your first experience, you know, of, of you know, just first impressions. I heard the crafting sure. is supposed to be unbelievable, really, really deep and thorough. It's supposed to be a deep as far as crafting and your weapons and kind of shit like that goes, and loot and stuff. Supposed to be really pretty cool. Yeah. All right, let's get over to the news, shall we? Really. Really? Okay, do you hear what he just said? Do you hear what he, he just said, why don't you for once in your life just do the fucking news? All right, no, 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 no. I'm going to do, no, I'm going to do the fucking news. No, here is the fucking news. Hey, welcome to the chat, Shonuff. We were just talking about Biomutant. And I can't remember if you were the one, Shonuff, or not, that was not interested anymore because of the class being behind a paywall. Well, that might have been, yeah, that might have been Kevin. Mm, can't remember. Someone mentioned that. I'm not sure who it was. Um, anyways, let's get on to the news. Bethesda and Microsoft are going to share the stage at E3, Matt. So Makes in, sense. In our past life, E3, Bethesda would have their own sort of night, either pre-E3 or during E3. And um, Microsoft would have their own thing at the Microsoft Center. But it says Microsoft and Bethesda will host a joint conference this summer to introduce players to their upcoming projects. Um, so, expectations, Matt. We obviously know that we're going to see um, Halo Infinite. Okay, we, you know, we think that's, that's for certain. Uh, people said leaks have gone out last week that they will tease us with some sort of small trailer of Starfield, Todd Howard's new game, Bethesda Studios. And the story there is that that will be a um, Xbox exclusive, which we think we all expected, a new IP from Bethesda would be exclusive to Xbox. Anything else besides those two things that you can think of? They said they got, what, 27 game studios? Is that how many studios do they have? 27, 23? Can't remember now. But um, are you ex well, first of all, are you excited for Halo Infinite or Starfield? Are you looking forward to see what those have to offer? I'm looking forward to see what they are, you know, especially Starfield. Um, Halo Infinite curious about it I and mean, it's not like oh shit i gotta go out and see what it is um i think i'm more curious what announcements i come out they have for game pass mm -hmm. and stuff you know coming up and what might be added or coming to it or what's going on with that 
Um, I think that's going to be the big thing that's that's going to be talked about. Are we going to do a drinking game during this press conference? Every time someone mentions Game Pass or Game Pass gets flashed on the screen, we take a shot of something? I will I will gladly <laughs> imbibe in that uh, in that game, in that <laughs> drinking game there. Fuck, yeah. we'll be wasted in the first five seconds. Instead of Xbox exclusive, it'll be Game Pass, you know. Well, like 20, <laughs> mi- 20 minutes in, we'll be like, you know. Oh, man! I'll be fucking stinking drunk. Oh, God. 20 minutes in, probably 10 minutes in. I'm trying to think what else Bethesda um, will show us there. I think they'll probably show... Um, be, well, here's an interesting thing for you, Matt. They're, they're putting out Deathloop, right? Mm-hmm. And Deathloop is exclusive to the PS5. You know, a timed exclusive. So they're going to have Deathloop at E3 at a Microsoft pre- Bethesda press conference and have the game be exclusive to the PS5, like a timed exclusive? They're going to... Sh- that would be interesting. I would say it's possible, right? But I kind of doubt I it. I think that that other game too um, was a Ghostwire Tokyo. Is the other one that has an, is a timed exclusive to um, PS Five as well, to uh, at oh. least a PlayStation. Yeah, those two games. It might be like in a montage or something, maybe you know. But right. yeah, now, what's the chances of a major Bethesda game being announced? On during that time, slim. I don't think Fallout Five is anywhere close. I mean, they could have a major update to Fallout Seventy Six, but I don't think Fallout Five is even. If that's even under development, it's got to be the smallest of small teams. Because I, I mean, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the where they're at with things with Bethesda Studios was kind of Fallout Seventy Six, Starfield the next Elder Scrolls game, and then Fallout. You know, so whatever. What about a uh, Witcher 3 update for the Series X? Well, that's not Bethesda. That's not, no, that's right. Yeah, my bad. That's yeah. CD, CD Projekt Red. CD Projekt Red. Never yeah. mind. Never mind. Um, yeah, you could get Skyrim. <laughs> you could that's get what Sky- I'm thinking. That's what I'm get, thinking. Yeah, Skyrim. You get, you get Skyrim, Skyrim update <laughs> <laughs> for... Uh, yeah, Xbox Series X and PS5. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think Fallout will be mentioned at all. It will just be Fallout 76. You could have the new Elder Scrolls game, Elder Scrolls 6. Right? Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know, Doom, like the studio. I mean, I think that we already had Doom Eternal, so I don't think Doom is up for anything. Um,. Wolfenstein. I think the people who are made the Wolfenstein games, I think they're working on something non-Wolfenstein, so they might have something like that to show. I forget what IP they just... We mentioned it many episodes ago that they got some IP. Was it Indiana Jones? Indiana Jones. That, mm-hmm. was, the, that was the IP they got, so maybe something yeah. something along those lines. Yeah. Um, and what else? I don't think you'll see anything. Um, what's their other? I mean, I'm sure there'll be plenty of the uh, Elder Scrolls Online crap. You know, they're always they're always pushing that, which does very well for them. So, yeah, and I hear the, I hear good things about the latest you know Fallout 76, but I just they haven't um, fixed that like joint progression. You know, so you both get progress. Because they want right. you to have that drop-in, drop-out co-op experience. So, yeah. But they um, fixed a couple of things, you know, like the whole having to eat all the time and drink all the time. They, they, they've they taken care of that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they still. I don't, yeah. know if there's, I don't know if there's more legs. I'm not sure how well Prey did, if there's going to be a Prey 2, or if that was just a game that was summed up in one story, if you could go more with that. Um you know, possibly. I don't think, like, again, Wolfenstein, I don't think so. I think that's maybe on ice for a little bit while they do the Indiana Jones game. So I'm not sure what else we'd see from Bethesda. I'm sure there's going to be new IPs that maybe we haven't heard of. What's the studio, um, the Evil Within studio? Is that Are they doing the Ghostwire Tokyo? So maybe that, you know, 
possibly could see some of that. Or maybe there's some announcements about both of those games when they come to Xbox. Maybe that's how they'll show those two. Yeah, it's a timed exclusive to PlayStation, but they'll be on Game Pass on such and such date when it expires. Uh, but getting to Microsoft, you know, Halo Infinite. Uh, we're going to see more of the Perfect Dark game. Uh, you know, they teased that. It showed a little bit of that last year. Um, but, you know, what else do they have? they have any surprises, anything up their sleeves? I mean, you're going to see more Forza. I think there's going to be another Forza Horizon. Um, sea of Thieves update. We're going to see a Sea of Thieves 2. Or you think they're just going to keep on building on Sea of Thieves? I think they're just going to keep on building on Sea of Thieves. Mm-hmm. You know? <clears throat> I wouldn't mind seeing a PvE mode added to that, but I don't see that happening. Um... I don't know. I think the big thing is going to be Game Pass announcement, announcements, maybe more combinations, deals with, you know, just, just out there, but like HBO or whatever, Par- Paramount or whatever, combining services or, you know, kind of shit like that. Um, I think they're going to lean heavily into 20 years of Xbox for sure. Um, oh, what sure. Do you, what do you think of a Xbox Series X console? with the stylings of an original Xbox. So I wouldn't. You, they wouldn't be buy able to, it. <laughs> I heard so on some other shows you could probably get the form the, the guts inside of an Xbox Series X into the form factor of an original Xbox. That's an interesting idea or you could come out with an Xbox Series X in the same form factor where we now know but have some original Xbox you know, stylings like the, like that center, that blue, that um, green, you know, Xbox logo that was in the center of the console. I could definitely see them doing it. I could definitely see it selling if they were to, you know, a classic Xbox, you know, Series X type of thing. You know, I could definitely see that happening. And it's like, holy shit, I got to have that. You know, the Xbox fridge is going to be there. The mini fridge is absolutely going to be there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah, I'm curious if what they do to lean into Xbox 20, I do think there's going to be some sort of console again, whether it's the same form. I know consoles are hard to get right now, so they would have already had to plan this out at some point. But, um, I do think either in the form factor, we now know, but just, you know, maybe a a clear one like that green, remember that green, the the green Xbox. Yeah, uh-huh. um, something like that, or they could say, I'm, you know what, we're going to throw it back and make it look like the original one, but it's going to be an Xbox Series X. You know. Yes. Yeah. That's I'm looking at the old Xbox. Man, God, that brings back memories. Like the old design of that thing. I'm I'm in the market for one. I don't know if I want one that's working or not, or what. But I am in the market. You know, just to sort of have around and put in the display behind me. Um, but this. There's tons of them out there that modded, you know. If you can get them on HDMI, you know, might be something fun to kick kick around every now and then. Yeah, it'd be. I don't know. It'd be cool. I, I get, like I said, it, it would sell. It would definitely sell if they were to make something up like that. Um, I I think it's too soon for them to announce a mid tier upgrade console. You know, there might be maybe. A console that's half as tall or something. Oh, I don't know. I think it would be such a slap in the face if people can't even get these fucking consoles to come out with a mid tier thing. They announced right a new one. Oh man, I'd be so fucking heated. Uh, you know, you want to give me a twenty year anniversary? You know, one sure, fine. But you're gonna fucking already hit me over the head with some sort of you know, some sort of half step generational. Get the fuck out of here. And even if that's the same thing for PlayStation, you come out with some sort of slim right out of the gate when people can't even get the other ones. I'd be so you, you know it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen with the PlayStation. You know they're going to come out six with a smaller later. version. Or but not six no, months later. I'd but, be so turned off. I would be so turned off no, if either one soon. of them do that. I bet you soon they're going to come out with a smaller PS5. Next E3, Next E3 or Hall. You know, I'd be oh, I'd be so turned off if either one of them did that. Yeah. Let's let's move. Let's change subjects, man. You're going to get me all. Anyways, Xbox. Oh. <laughs> Xbox, um, I would love to see Xbox come out with just show us the games, just give us some new IPs to get excited about. You know, I agree. I um, agree. We're getting all sorts of comments in uh chat here. 
Uh, Shonuff says, I'd like to see something to make me excited for Xbox again. Maniac says, big Chrome X or OG Xbox console. Shonuff says, he still has his. Maniac has two of them uh, with the Dukes and a set of the HD cables. Of course, HD was 720. Uh, he said he would expect to see a digital Series X. That could come out. Um, you know, I would just, I would just be turned off if it was something like a half step, like, yeah, the, his, like the, the pro Xbox series X or the pro PS five that's slimmed down. I would just, I'd be disgusted. I'd be disgusted. I would not even six months later and the majority of people can't get these things. I would, I'd flip a lid anyways. Um, show us the games, Microsoft. That's what we want to see. And Jeff Keeley's going to show us the games, Matt, on June 10th with the Summer Game Fest. It's back yeah. this year. Start on June 10th with an event called Kickoff Live. It's billed as a spectacular world premiere showcase with more than a dozen world premieres and announcements. The show uh, will begin at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, again, hosted by Jeff Keeley. Uh, they said the publishers confirmed to be participating in the Summer Game Fest include 2K, Activision, Blizzard, Capcom, Epic Games, Sony, Riot Games, Square Enix, Ubisoft, and Xbox. Uh, so, yeah, he, you know, he sort of broke away from YouTube with the whole E3 thing a couple of years ago and does his own thing now. Of course, he does the Game Awards, but he does the own uh, Summer Game Fest now. So we'll see what, you know, he's got the inside track, right? People respect him, and the publishers go to him, know that the, his team's going to do a great job and get a lot of people interested. So we'll see what these more than a dozen world premieres. Do you think, Matt, this here is where 2K will show us what Gearbox is working on? Gearbox is supposedly working on another franchise besides Borderlands. I wonder if this is well, where we'll there's And there's supposed to be some big Borderlands 3 thing coming out or something okay so i wonder if that gets announced at this mm -hmm. some some type of big update big thing for borderlands 3 is supposed to happen too I, I that's the rumor i've been hearing on my you know watching my streams and shit but and borderlands 4 supposedly is going to be the big one for them they're already hiring ramping up uh getting the people in place to make that so the, you know, it's going to be Borderlands, Borderlands, Borderlands pretty soon. The movie's coming out. They're working on it. They're you know filming it right now. So there's going to be a big push for that. But yeah, I'm curious if we're going to see that other franchise and hopefully it's something better than that other game. What was that game that flopped? It came out at the same time around Overwatch and it just it just did not do well for them and they quickly abandoned it maybe about six to eight months. Oh, what the hell was that? You probably pre-ordered it and that's why it went in the tank. Well, uh... <laughs> Bulletstorm? No, no, they did. They did uh, publish. I think no. Uh, they might have. They might have republished that. Um, someone will remember in chat. But it came out same type of thing that came out around Overwatch. Um, if anyone knows, it'd be Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> it it tanked. It tanked pretty quick. There was a kind of like a fierce battle at PAX, and I remember the Overwatch uh, team had like cars. Like remember like Lyft and like Uber and stuff like that. And they mm -hmm. had some they had some Overwatch themed like Lyft and Uber rides out there, and one of them got in like a car accident outside in front of Pax, and like Randy Pitcher like tweeted like disparaging remarks about like the accident and like the game because his game was coming out to compete with it. It's oh no, it was kind of comical. I'm yeah, trying to just type in gear. just type in Gearbox in their discography and see what uh <laughs> see what releases. You know, it came out before Borderlands 3. Um, but yeah, uh, 2K, Activision, you know, Activision, I'm not sure what they're going to be, uh, maybe more content for Call of Duty. I don't know, you know, for the for Warzone, I'm not sure if they're at a point right now where they want to already announce the next Call of Duty game. They usually do that at E3. They announce the next one. Yeah. 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 So maybe that's... Um. Uh, Battleborn? Yeah, that's it. Battleborn. Yep. Uh, Blizzard, maybe Diablo 4. You see something from them. You know, Capcom's. That'd be pretty exciting. I would like to see some Diablo 4 uh, yeah, news. Yeah, sure. 
uh, Capcom, you know, doing a tremendous, you know, with all the Resident Evil stuff and um, the Monster Hunter games, you know, so they're having a a very uh, prolific period right now, so they can almost have anything. Um, you know, Epic Games could be Fortnite stuff, could be could be anything there. PlayStation, you know, we talked last week that they have 25 new um, games to show, and not all of them, you know, you know, more than half are new IP, so maybe we'll see something there. You know, so it'll be exciting, you know. It's exciting to be out of COVID. It's exciting just to get back into games and seeing some of these events come back. They're supposed to, I think Jeff Keighley said they're going to have a studio, so this is not going to be like a, um, like a virtual thing. Like last year, that they're going to be in a in a, in a studio space. So we'll see how this all uh, comes together. So I'm excited for for E3 this year, and I for me it's more about the games. I know Xbox is going to talk about Game Pass and everything like that, but when we got into gaming back in in the days, it wasn't about the services; it was about the games. And I want to see. That's why I'm excited about Bob Mutant. I want a new IP, something new and fresh to play, and hopefully we will see that at these um, showcases. Yeah. You know what would probably blow everybody's minds if Capcom came out with like a, a new Mega Man game? That'd be fucking awesome. At the birthday you know? party I was at today, people were talking a about Mega Man. Former, you know, that would be fucking awesome, man. That would sell some shit. Well, people think... always, people always go back for that uh, nostalgia grab. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that'd moving... be sweet as hell. Moving on, um, The Last of Us Part Two, Matt, now runs at 60 frames per second on the PS5. The performance patch is just the first step of working on the PS5, Naughty Dog says. So I don't know if uh, Noah has played Last of Us Part Two yet, but if he, he hasn't, um, he can now play it on his PS5 at 60 frames per second. Once you've installed patch 1.08, There'll be a new option to display settings. You can set the frame rate target at 30 or 60 frames per second. Uh, the PS5 should be capable of handling the latter without any real issues, though. Uh, Digital Foundry tested the patch and found that The Last of Us 2 was locked at 60 frames per second through eight hours of gameplay, save for one momentary blip. Hey, what? That's going to look gorgeous, I bet. Yeah, I bet it's going to really make a big difference in how that game plays. And look at this. You know? Clubbox has joined us, a um, a preacher of The Last of Us 2. Eric, are you going to replay it in 60 frames per second on the PS5, sir? I'll probably just look at it. I probably won't play it all the way through. I'll just probably <laughs> just go in and look at it. Because it's done. You know what I'm saying? The story is done. It is what it is. You just like to look at it? Oh, where is he? I'd like to look at him. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. I'm sorry I'm late. You know, you get busy from time to time on the job, you know. At the J-O-B, huh? Putting all the bad yeah. guys and bad girls away? I, I guess. Locking them up good. and throwing away the key? We've had a very prolific episode here, Eric, so we're going to... What, what's going on? Tell me well, what's we, going we, on. We talked about hot dog and sausage shrinkage at the grill. Are you okay. are you aware of this phenomenon? I have I have been cooking my hot dogs and sausages, and then when I take them off the grill and put them on the serving plate, they shrink up like the like the little um, witch, Wicked Witch of the West feet in Wizard of Oz. You know what I mean? They, they're not as plump anymore. They're shrinking up on me. So <laughs> trying to solve that problem. We were just talking about um, Xbox and Bethesda are going to have a showcase. And we were pr- uh, prognosticating what uh, was going to happen. Prognosticating, yeah. love it. Yeah. What do you? What I do hope they're going to get. I hope. I hope to get built up, and they're going to say Starfield is exclusive. Yada yada yada. You know. Oh, you know Starfield's exclusive to. Uh, yeah. To Xbox. Yeah. And they'll probably show a little gameplay, a little tease in that, you know. Mm-hmm. We, we, so what do you think about this, Eric? A Xbox Series X in the shape of an original Xbox, the OG Xbox, 
because you know we're trying to think what Microsoft's going to do at E3 this year, and Matt's laying into the um, well, it's going to be Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass, which of course is going to happen, and they're also you know having Bethesda be there in in their conference as well. So besides you know showing Halo Infinite and the Bethesda stuff and leaning into Game Pass, I'm like you know hopefully we'll see some of their other studios and what they've been working on, but they're definitely going to lean into the whole 20 years of Xbox this November. And what do you think of a um, Xbox Series X, the guts of an Xbox Series X inside of a original OG Xbox? I mean, it'll be cool, but they can't even sell the the, the regular one. So, I mean, that'll be something cool to see. I mean, mm-hmm. it'll be exclusive. I'm sure they'll charge an arm and leg. That that that'll be yeah, nice. They'll be like they'll make like 200 of them, and you know. Yeah. But you know what I think they're going to come out with? This is just me surmising for, for, for E3. I don't know if you heard word of this, but I hear some Steam integration. Okay. Cool. From, with Microsoft and Steam. It's hot. That's it's interesting. Steamy. Yeah, I'm hearing that. And, and, and if that happens, I mean, that will be... I mean, you can drop the mic with that. That'll be something all depends on how they do it you mean a lot of their i mean you're seeing more and more like sony and um you know microsoft putting their stuff on steam you know for the longest time the microsoft stuff was just on their own windows 10 store but now they're allowing some of their stuff to come over to steam and of course you know days gone is doing tremendous on uh steam right now which is a ps ps4 exclusive so yeah i think steam and these consoles are going to get somewhat integrated because for some reason, I'm just saying PSVR 2 and Half-Life Alex. I'm just I'm saying that all day. Mm-hmm. So, okay. We'll see. Yeah, maybe we'll have some of that. Uh, you know, we were just talking. Jeff Keighley's going to have um, Summer Game Fest this year. It's going to be on yeah. June, June 10th. Ten world premieres, uh, 12 world premieres. And uh, we're trying to predict of, of what's going on there. We're thinking, you know heard rumblings this week that Activision, not Activision, um, 2K. So maybe they're going to be showing their new uh, new franchise for Gearbox. They're supposed to be working on something that's going to be dropping soon. So maybe you'll see some of that. But yeah, Sony's supposed to be there as well. Maybe that's where they'll show you the PSVR news. Who knows? Um, you know, Jeff Keighley is a big uh, proponent of Half-Life Alex. So maybe that's he gets that yeah. scoop and shows it there. All exciting stuff, though. I mean, I think the knockout blow is if Sony could get with Steam, right? You'd have the PS, the PlayStation franchise, which is just killing it in general, right? And you get in Discord integration next year, right? Because they just made a minority stake in Discord. And if you could mm-hmm. get Steam, because, you know, people who use Steam use Discord hand in hand. They go together like peanut butter yeah. and jelly. You that know, would you be could, killer. You know, that would be, that'd be Man. something. But we've uh, whoever we've, gets we've, steam, whoever gets steam is going to be on top, I think. Yeah, well, it depends. It all depends on how um, that works. Like, what is the integration there? Does that mean like the Steam library would be accessible on the on the Xbox? Like, what's the integration there? Like, what's the flow? I would need to hear more about you know how that plays. Yeah, is it just everything you buy then would also be available on Steam? I don't, you know, at all. The, it could mean many different things. It's like yeah. all of a sudden, like you log into Steam, like and your library's there on the console. Well, that's fucking huge because I think last time I checked, I have over 500 games on Steam. <laughs> yeah, know, all, that would be that, crazy huge. Yeah, all that shit just you know all of a sudden populated, which would be in a, you know kind of weird. I guess turn maybe your, cl- turn, maybe cloud. You are talking about streaming the shit from the cloud? I don't you know? know. Turning your turning your Series X into a a, a Steam box. Remember them things used to be yep. back in the day? Yeah. yeah. Those silly controllers that some people actually like. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we've moved on to um, the last was part two, 60 frames per second. Um, and I think that is, um, when is this coming out? Did I already talk about that? Yeah. Mm. I'm just so distracted now. I can't tell if it's already out or not. I think it is. Okay. So... <clears throat> This is just a first step of working on the PS5, and they hinted they will have more news to share later. 
So the uh, people are speculating that ray tracing upgrade is in the works as well. So there you go. Uh, moving on to some other stuff here. GTA 5, speaking, Matt, of you said earlier of Skyrim getting an update. GTA 5 <laughs> is getting an upgrade to PS5 and Xbox Series X in November. November 11th, the new version will be available. So this would mean three console generations, right? It came out on the 360 PS3, right? Yes. And then it was made for the Xbox One, and then it probably got an Xbox One X enhanced version, right? And a PS4 Pro enhanced version, I would assume. And now it's going to come to the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. That game just won't die. <laughs> yep. That's amazing. I, 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 might, I might pick it up again, depending on what else is going on at the time you know Rock, rockstar says they will be expanded and enhanced it's not clear what upgrade path will look like for current owners of the game uh gta gta online meanwhile will be available as a standalone title and sony previously said that it would be free for all ps5 owners during the first three months of availability yeah i mean the game looked great anyway so i'd be curious to see what it looks like on the Series X, PlayStation 5. Yeah, honestly, I, yeah. 140 million copies to date it has sold. It's going to sell more. I wouldn't mind seeing Red Dead Redemption 2 on the Series X or PlayStation 5. Yeah. You know, I've seen people playing Red Dead Redemption 2 in VR. On, on oh, PC. yeah? They have, they, yeah, they have it modded where you can play it in VR. I've seen people this week playing Gears of War 3 on a PS3. You see that? Yeah, but who wants that? Well, they said that there was some some guy who was doing some. I think that's what he does. He uncovers code, and Epic came out and said it was part of their testing way back when, and you know, because of course that was an Xbox franchise, so people flipping their lids to see Gears of War three running on a PlayStation three. Mm. I am sort of jonesing, though, to play GTA V again and, get, and f actually finish, this, finish it this time. I don't know if I'll wait. Didn't they, say, uh, didn't they say 6 was going to be in 2022, something like that? Yeah, they said nothing to show this year. Still being worked on for sure. Uh. Uh, this week, May 22nd, a game that I really enjoyed, Saints Row the Third Remastered, coming to PS5 xbox series and pc may 22nd you watch that video that's quite the difference no, in not may 22nd, may 25th because may 22nd is already passed excuse me may 25th yeah. same day as biomute so you, you've already watched it matt and it's quite a difference watch that trailer video there yeah the difference between the you know two is amazing now this is the last saints row that i played Something else came out. There was a whole bunch of different Saints Rows after that, or that, like, Get Out of Hell. There was some yeah. other stuff that came out, and I never played yeah, any there's, of those. There's a Saints Row 4 came out, right? Was there a Saints Row 4? I think so. Okay. I th I'll have to I, look. The I'm last sure thing I remember right. playing was going, like, like, some sort of space scene, right? It was, like, maybe the DLC for Saints Row the Third. You were, like... Was you the was it the president and you like in space or something like that? Something well, it, crazy along those lines. Well, there was that straight to hell too, where like everything was like on fire and shit, and dark and stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't play much of that one. So the the Saints Row Third Remastered is an upgraded version of the 2011 game, including all released DLC and extra content in one package. The game will benefit from a 60 frames per second frame rate and dynamic 4K resolution on both consoles. The Xbox Series version will also include a choice to play in either performance, 60 frames per second in 1880p, or beauty, 30 frames per second in 4K modes. Nice. Saints Row 4 was good. You were the president. Yeah, I didn't play Saints Row 4. So I did, 3 was the last one I played. I think I'm in the same boat. Then I did three, that. Whatever that. Three was yeah, the one with the about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And then um, wherever that get that out. Hanging over the mantle. 
It's in the yeah. closet. Eric has the, you know, <laughs> Eric has the, the the fishnet stocking, you know, lamp, and Matt has the purple dildo bat. If you guys move in, it'd be a hell of a hell of a showcase. Yeah. Yeah. Battle with the dildos. Yeah. <laughs> You'll win, Matt. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot, a lot of stuff. A lot of you know. I don't know what this is. Not a lot of stuff coming out. So people just go into the well again, the things that sold well and giving them a new, a new, uh, you know, up res, new polish, more frames, you know, and people just keep buying them over and over, right? Because they want the latest and greatest yeah. looking, looking version of these things. I mean, 2011, yeah, I over I 10 years ago, man. I don't know if I want that, Damn. though. I, I'm not interested in so much of the, you know, up resing and the 120, 60 frames and 120 frames. I'm, I don't care about that, really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like um, there's only so much that you can go back and, like, play and have it be new and fresh to you. I mean, it probably has been eight to ten years since I've played that game, so that might feel new and fresh to me because my memory's not what it used to be. Um, but, yeah, a little, bit of, a little bit of it feels like going to the well and just trying to milk people. You have to pay for oh, I assume it's a free update. I'm assuming if you already have it. You know, you know, you're not paying for it. So, I guess they're trying to do something with the law that's going on in gaming right now. Nothing's really coming out, so they're just throwing this stuff up and letting you do something while the mm. we wait till the floodgates open. I guess. Yeah. You got a qu while I look for a video. Uh, we got a question for you, Glove Box. Bricko's in chat. Up? What's going on, Bricko? Um, What's up, Brick? He wants to know, Glove Box. Did you try the new Quest game? Demio. It's a and d game. I guess Hoodie Ninja uh, has been playing it. Jeremy, have you yeah. been playing that in VR at all? Okay, so I have it. I bought it and I played it. And I played the tutorial only because I haven't had really time to do it. Because mm -hmm. they say it's fun to play with people. And when I'm on there playing it, it's usually real late at night, so nobody's awake when I'm trying to do that. But um, pretty freaking awesome, though. To be in that headset and to see how, how it's set up looks fantastic, man. I mean, it's like everything you ever dreamed of. If you ever played like a a D and D type game, yep. It's yeah, it's it's all that. I I give him props on that game. I was watching a little bit of him playing it the other day, and but it was like a hand was coming down. Like again, you don't know how these games translate on on steam on stream compared to what you're seeing you know exactly the, and it looks way different it looks way different when you had a headset on right so um, much it looked pretty yeah. cool though it looked pretty neat it is it's very detailed i know i know jeremy and al and i think somebody else was in there playing they were they were playing they had a real good time they were talking about it so yeah it looked pretty cool it yeah real. Uh, I want to show you. I want to show you a new. I think we've heard about it before, but this is coming out to uh, Game Pass um, day and date, July 29th. First of all, how are you guys on top-down or isometric view games like uh, Diablo, like you know Diablo I'm so, style? I, I already know what you're talking about. The Ascent. I'm so ready, Mike. Let's go. All right, I'm going to show you this. I'm, I'm going to show Matt I'm this in ready. case he's not aware of it. Let me um, switch over to see how this goes on the new TV and switching over to things. We're going to look at at Firefox here. Switch this here. Make this big. So Ascent, this is supposed to be a cyberpunk, um, you know, world. Top down, you know, isometric. Not sure. Um, check it out, Matt. Let me know what you, let me know what you're seeing here. It's, you know, it's got all the cyberpunk colors and hues and purples and blues, right? Yeah. But uh, it doesn't look as broke as cyberpunk. <laughs> it's a lot of crap going on at one time, let me tell you. Yeah. It looks pretty cool, man. I mean, in the it beginning, does. they're just showing guys walking around, not really fast paced. Um, yeah. And everybody's voiced. But it's it picks cool. up for sure. 
you know, you definitely get some of those high house mark, you know, uh, dead nation, alienation vibes from it. Yeah, all those particle effects and all that good stuff is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, definitely you got the space Diablo feel. Yeah. Yep. Porch light, that type of shit. Uh, so this is coming to Game Pass, day and date, July 29th. It's called The Ascent. Well, Game looks Pass, like you, hey, I'll give it a try. Like you, yeah, it looks like you can play with four players. Oh, uh, yeah. It's also coming to Steam. does not look like it's coming to the PlayStation. So. Be worth looking into. Yeah, be a new one for you to check out again, The Ascent. Eric, you said you're all over this. How come? Because I like the whole top-down Diablo type game, and yeah. that looks just like another, you know, another kind of version of that. And you know, the cyberpunk, you know, feel of it looks pretty cool. So, yeah, I'm into that. Ryan McCaffrey calls a Judge Dread meets Diablo, but uh, or that, I guess that's what maybe they're hyping it up as. But he said after playing it, he says it's more like Hunter the Reckoning, but cyberpunk. Uh, it's an isometric action RPG, but you are twin stick shooting the majority of the time. He said it felt good on mouse and keyboard, um, but of course, you know, this is coming to the console, so you'll be able to use your, you know, controller as well. Yeah, I'll be downloading that for sure. Yeah. I'll have to check that out together. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's just always good to see another another franchise uh, come out, you know, and the, the top-down isometric thing is, you know, very popular with some people. Other people don't like it. You know, I want to see my characters bigger and, you know, the pop on the screen like we're used to with some of these AAA games. So sometimes I feel like these these other games are, are tougher to sell with the huge audience because of the way, the way they feel and operate. So I'm not sure if that's going to hold it back or not. Um, I think everybody in the older school is going to be familiar with a twin stick shooter. Uh, you get melee special abilities. Uh, you'd be primarily be slaying, though. Halo style two slot gun system, says McCaffrey at IGN. Now, see, this is when this is when Game Pass pays for itself. Stuff like that, fantastic. Right, where you you don't know if you're a hundred percent in or not, so you just dip your toes. Right. And if right. it knocks your socks off, you're like, great, I didn't have to pay for it, and this thing is awesome, and you can tell everybody about it. And if it's yeah. not great, well, you move on. So Again, that game is called The Ascent, and it's out on Game Pass on July 29th. Uh, before we move on to um, voicemail, Eric, you weren't here for the What You've Been Playing section. So um, what have you been playing, if anything? Overwatch, Besides of course. Besides the J-O-B. Right? Oh, I want to get your... Yeah. You mentioned Overwatch, Overwatch, of course. Let's get right to it. Um, yeah, man. First thing I want to say, Eric, is I'm very sorry about your Washington Capitals. You know, if we just want to get right down to it, you know, and get to the heart I mean, of we the matter. We could, we could have said that for the end, I mean, but Boston well, you know, did their thing. Boston, Boston did, did their, their thing. thing, baby. We lost the first I, one, but then we won four in a row. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about that. Ow. Okay, let's talk about games. So right. we're talking, <laughs> we're talking about um, Overwatch, man. The new Overwatch, Overwatch going the five v five. That's what I want to know about. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's good. I guess we'll see. We I need to figure it out because I don't know how many tanks you can have on a squad at a time. I know there's they they implement a lot of different uh different uh uh boards you know as far as like places that you and they they, they have another uh a mode in there like a push mode so i'm okay. interested to really play it i saw the demo and i watched the uh the devs talk about it and everything and it looked great man but 505 five, i don't know because that means like you're gonna have probably like one tank and four other uh especially ability people you know mm -hmm. usually you can have whatever you want it was six on six now, since it's no, not a, a franchise I care much about, what was the rationale of them going from 6v6 to 5v5? I think because it you can uh, overpower a team. You know, back in the day, you could just have a whole bunch of tanks on the team, and it wasn't evenly spread out, you know? 
where you can have a tank, one tank that can have a shield, and then one tank that can't. You know, it's a whole it's a whole lot of different tanks are, are characters with big uh HP, you know, man, just huge HP. So I don't know, it kinda it kinda balances the game. I'll probably have a five on five and how many you can have on a squad, pretend you know, what, what class you can have. Mm-hmm. So I think they're trying to give it a little bit of longevity and make it more balanced. Okay. But uh yeah, I'm excited to I just want to play it. What's the tentative release window for that? I don't think it's coming out this year. Mm-hmm. I think it was twenty two. But they're showing a lot of it and that probably they'll show some stuff at E three. You know. I don't even know why they call it the Overwatch two. I think they could update what they have right now, really. But Probably some new characters. I don't know. I don't know why they call it Overwatch 2, but they're bringing out a whole new system. So okay. we'll see. So you've been playing your Overwatch? Yeah, I've been playing that. And I played, uh, I streamed the other night, Returnal. I saw I'm the stream notice, that. yep. Man, that thing, it's just hard, bro. God. <laughs> no, you didn't do any shuck, you, you, you didn't get your shucking and jiving down this week? You didn't master it? I mean, I, I tried, man, but I, I don't know. Sometimes you have good days. Sometimes you have bad days. Last last stream was a bad day, you know. And that's a game you got to pay attention to. Because while I'm looking at chat, I'm, <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to bullet hell. You know, it's it's a whole lot. So it's fun though. I I keep going back to it. I have I haven't got tired of it. You know, I don't I don't get upset when I die. You just you just go at it again. You know. So mm-hmm. have you had any uh, any runs error out on you at all? No. Mm. I'm seeing the guy, um, Tom Hap. He did the, um, oh, what's that? What's that Metroidvania game? That's uh, uh, Axiom Verge. Uh, he's a oh, developer. Yeah. He's a developer of that. You know, he plays mm-hmm. a lot of games as well, and he's getting into. I think he's primarily a PlayStation gamer, and um, so he's been playing Returnal, and he's been tweeting out that he keeps going into runs, and every once in a while they error out on him. Well, just kick him back to the dashboard or something well, you know you get that usual playstation message you know like oh, yeah. error do you yeah. want to re- yeah. report it or whatever yeah uh, so no, it's good i think it's not if they out. had a if they had a uh some sort of like a save system in it it'd be it'd be they're working but, on something they are working but, on it i don't know i think when i get on a on a run where I'm at the boss level, I should be able to start over in the boss level or something. I don't know. Hmm. Instead boss of going all, all the way back to the beginning. All the way back to the beginning. Then you got, because it's procedurally generated, so you got to find your way back to the boss. It's just a mess. You would get frustrated there's with like, the yeah, map. Yeah, there's like no checkpoint. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, Matt would definitely get frustrated with it, Mike. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think he would love it, though, <laughs> at the same time. I think he would like the whole thing, the whole package. Because Matt's, I think so too, Matt's big but... into the fresh. Wow, well, this feels next gen. This feels something really special, you know. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I think his, his, if he streamed it, it would be enjoyable for me, though, because he, <laughs> <laughs> he would do a whole lot of cursing. But yeah, yeah. But that's was, that's all I've been playing. All of yeah. it. That's it. Bloodborne, yeah, I thought was going to be more humorous stream, but it didn't last too long. Hey, Bob. Okay, that's. I don't think it. you would. Get, you, you wouldn't give up on Returnal. Yeah, it's not as punishing it as Bloodborne. It, yeah, it lets you proceed, but I don't know. You just die, and it's not as punishing as Bloodborne. Forget that. That'd be the good thing. Did you finish Resident Evil yet? No, I've I've just been playing uh, Returnal. Okay, and uh, where's your hype this week? You missed at the beginning um, for Bio Mutant. Well, I'm really hyped about that. I've been watching uh, previews of it. Yep. But yeah, I'm 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 gonna definitely give that a spin. Okay, where are you getting that? Xbox, PC, PlayStation. I don't know. What's the best version? Have they said? Uh, Xbox. I think um, at least right out of the gate, it's not going to be um, native 4K on PlayStation Five. It's going to be 1080p, 60 frames. But it's not coming. Best version it's, be PC. it's not. It's not coming right. to Game Pass, though, right? No, it is not. But yeah. Jeremy says now that Matt already pre-ordered it, it will probably be coming to Game Pass pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. In about a month or so. Yeah. Now, well, I'll, I'll get just, it on the Xbox. 
all the reviews hit and we circled back as we were wondering about who was the person that was talking about the paywall. I think I got my, my comment uh, incorrect and uh, Shonoff was saying that it was, they were perks that were hide. Um, let me find or the comment. premium version. Right. Premium version had perks locked behind it. Yeah. Nope, they're hiding when does it come perks out? behind the premium version. Yeah. When does it come out again? Uh, Tuesday. Okay, I'll, I'll pick it up Tuesday. Yeah. You gotta get well if you pre-order it, Eric. Um, Matt was saying there's a uh, mercenary class as mm-hmm. a pre-order as a pre-order bonus. So. Yep. You got to make a decision either tonight or tomorrow. Oh, I'll order it tonight. Yeah. And it's only like 13 gigs. Really. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Day one patch, a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, by the way. <laughs> forgot about that. Oh no. All right. Well, uh, before we get into the voicemail, I bought something this week. Did you buy? Have any purchases? Uh-oh. Anybody buy anything this week? No. no. We're looking at Mike's corner. Oh, yeah. oh, Matt, you got. Oh man, that looks good right there. That's a nice blue. Uh oh, Mike's uh, corner. Mike's 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 tech corner. What do you got? Let's see. Speaking of paywalls, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, saw, you know, I was just minding my own business on my Twitter feed. You know, I'm not trying to spend oh, any God. money. And something <laughs> okay. comes across my feed, and they're saying this is an absolute must-have, and it was, you know, on sale for eighty dollars. So here we go. This big box here. Fuck is that? Oh, some this, clip speakers. Oh yeah, yeah, some desktop speakers. Yeah, those those knock, man. Those are good. Those are good, eighty dollars, and I got them hooked up to my television, you know, via the wireless, uh, not via the wired, you know, headset port or whatever. Booming, man! Mm-hmm. Fucking shit yeah. sounds good. Yeah, yeah, man. What what's the regular price on them? Oh, I think sometimes they're as low as one hundred five or one thirty four or something like that. So they were seventy nine ninety five. Good deal. Yeah, you, you you had to do that. No, yeah, people say they last forever. You know. Yeah, so clips pack, of good speakers. Pack a punch. Yes, sir. And that sub is great too. Yeah. Yeah. So that was well worth it. You know, I just plug it right into my television. Um, I'm good to go now. There you go. Yeah. Mike's pick. Mike's pickups. We'll call it Mike's pick of the week. That's right. (laughs) How do you pronounce that again? Clipsage. Clips. Clips. Don't ask me. K L I P S H. Clips. Clips. That's right. There you go. Pro Media 2.1 THX. They sell they sell really good speakers, Clips though. Yeah, they sell really high end shit too. You can drop a bunch of Absolutely. fucking dough on that shit. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh Maniac is in chat saying he got the Xbox wireless um headset? Yeah, he said he got yeah, he he's wondering how yeah, we're he... faring. Matt says he's doing all right with it. Uh Maniac, tell us how you're doing with it. Uh, Bricko says I got the headset as well this week. So Bricko and Maniac, how are you enjoying? Yeah, how are yours? Cause Matt is still Mike warm. Head. You know what's interesting is Matt's headset that he's got on right now, the HyperX, sounds great on the podcast. But for whatever reason, when it goes over to the Xbox, it's kind of so-so. And you know when Maniac has his Xbox on his as well, it's you know you get that echo sometimes, so-so. But on PC, it seems like it does very well for you, Matt, which is strange. Again, the Xbox and their proprietary bullshit. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I, like I said earlier, I update, updated my headset, and it seems to be working better, but, you know, the jury is still out on it. I'm not 100% sold on it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, Maniac's limited, limited use so far this week. Uh, he'll be doing a full test more. Bricko says, so far, so good, so. Yeah, I'd be curious. So what has to happen this week is we'll have to get Glovebox, Maniac, Bricko, myself, and Matt all in one party on Wednesday <laughs> with all wearing the same headsets and see, see if we all happens. sound like we're fucking talking in a tunnel, like an echo chamber. Yep. <laughs> and see what happens. Yep. And then, yep. And then that's, that's going to go down to everybody's internet. Yeah. <laughs> so, somebody's internet is... Dial up. Somebody's using somebody's using dial up. Zubf, 
<laughs> Dub F left a voicemail this week. Let's get to that before we wrap up. We don't want to go two weeks in a row without um without his voicemail. Hopefully nothing was uh time sensitive last week and this isn't a stale fucking voicemail, but we'll see what happens. Here we go. What's going on, Jillian? Huh? Beautiful day outside. We're in spring, almost headed into summer. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Huh? Outside, getting the old pool ready. Outside yesterday, grilling. Had the first grill out. Yeah, with the old charcoal. I went easy. I just did hamburgers. But still, there's just something about how, you know, something made on the grill. You know, it's like, yes. Kick away winter and welcome in the warmth. Yeah. Anyway, how's everybody doing this week, huh? Doing good, doing good, doing good. Hopefully, everybody's doing good. Hopefully, everybody's there. Have a full house. Yeah. Full house. Anyway, all right, here's a question. It's probably going to sound ridiculous, but here's a question. This Mass Effect thing, here's my question. I've never played Mass Effect. Somehow I own every Mass Effect game ever made, but I've never <laughs> played it, ever, ever played it. I heard how good it was, and I thought, well, I better buy this when it's on sale. So when it got really cheap, I'd buy it and uh, go on the shelf and sit there and stare at me and uh, be like, yeah, hey, you should play us. I'm like, yep, no, I'm going to get to you, I'm going to get to you, and it never, never happens. So now we have the remastered, I don't know, Ultimate Edition or whatever the heck it is. But uh, What's the question, think, uh, Fred? I mean, I, I don't think I could go back to the 360 and play this. I think it has to be a newer system, right? It's better load times, better graphics, all the other jazzy stuff. Uh, now look at it, uh, look at it digitally. Since I have uh, Ultimate Pass Plus, I have that EA Access thing. So EA is throwing me a ball and they're giving me a discount. I think it knocks it down to 53. And then uh, Microsoft themselves tell me they'll give me 6,000. Uh, Microsoft points, that takes another six bucks off. Uh, and if I buy it and play and get one achievement, I get another 250, uh, Microsoft points. So, uh, I don't know what is ballpark, what, 47 bucks, I guess I'm looking at. Do I do it, gentlemen? Should I do it? Yeah, it's digital, but that's all right. It's there. I don't have to get up and load a disc, find a disc, scratch a disc, lose a disc. You know, it's just digital. It sits there. Everything's good. So that's my question, gentlemen. Do I pull the trigger or do I say, no, thank you? I'll be waiting to hear. Hope everyone has a great week. Enjoy life. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy everything. Why not, right? Make the most of it. You only get one day at a time, so take it. Don't break it and just enjoy it. All right, I'm done babbling. See you guys later. Arrivederci. All right, Matt, that was for you. Take one day one day at a time, sir. Um you know, I missed out on this whole 6,000 points thing. Where the hell was I supposed to get that? Did I have to jump through some certain, like, hoops to do that? Or they just gave me that automatically when I bought it? Because I just bought it on the, the console store. I didn't see anything about 6,000 points. I saw uh, Los and uh, Jagoosh talking about that on Twitter. But I didn't see any 6,000 points when I bought the fucking game. And I've certainly got achievements so far. So where the hell are my 250? Where, where are all these points? Do I got to turn in my... Um, my Game Pass, you know how you, you get those things that pop up, like hand in your Game Pass achievements. So daily, time. daily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do I got to turn that yeah. shit in to, to claim that? Um, Probably so. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if to tell you if it's worth buying or not. I mean, I'm playing only playing Mass Effect 1 so far in 120 frames per second. It looks fucking phenomenal. But it's still a very dated you know, gaming experience. It doesn't feel like a modern gaming experience, but it looks fine. Uh, so... He said he could get it for. He said he could get it for forty-seven something like that. Just yes. alone, just alone. Mass Effect Two is worth that to me. Yeah, I, I think I it definitely say, worth. I would say, yeah, I would say pull the trigger for it. But it's a one. It's a slow roll. Two is good. Two is the best, and three is just good. So well, you know, I mean, just, three three you had to play because you did the other two. So you hit. You yeah, had to you got to got to do it. You know, yeah. it's almost um, you're obligated. Yeah. Right. So so buy a couple less six packs of that pink flamingo beer. You know? <laughs> no yeah. one needs to no one needs to be drinking that. And then yeah. just put you know, if you got any empties laying around at the house, you know, you fucking cash those in for some space bucks. And you can you justify go. your purchase. The dreaded J yeah. word, justify. That's a good trigger pull though, Fred, if you ask me. Or you I think so. or you could skip it and say, you know what? I missed the boat on it, and I'm going to support something new. And I'm going to buy Biomutant. Well, there's yeah. that too. There's that. There's that too. Because Mass Effect 
I mean, to play it properly is it's a time sink. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. Definitely a lot going on there. And you have to pay attention. Yes, you do. Yeah. A lot of dialogue, you know, a lot of slow, like Eric said, just a lot of slow listening, talking, choosing S- conversations. Slow. Is there slow love? Tedious. Making? Yes, a lot of that, too. Nice. <sighs> I don't know if I know the meaning of slow lovemaking. I'm going to have no lovemaking for the next couple nights. The wife's away. What the fuck? There's always chatterbait, Mike. There is. There is. Um, You know, we're just like the fucking, um, we're like the the booby streamers in the hot tubs. We got our ad revenue pulled, so we're streaming essentially for free tonight. Yeah. (laughs) Our content was too risque for the advertisers. See? Well, That's how good we are. It's because it's because Matt doesn't have on any Cincinnati Bengals gear. Well, he's That's got his Hawaiian shirt on. You're gonna have to go back and re-listen to the early part of the show. But Matt is, you know, he's aiming to, he's gonna develop a fat raccoon in Bio Mutant, and he's hoping that he can adorn his character in Hawaiian outfits. Oh, okay. I, yep. Even if I have to buy it with real money, I will buy a Hawaiian shirt for my dude. For his fat raccoon. For my fat so he's, not, he's gonna be basically a resemblance of you. Yeah, myself. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> he was called, I think he was calling me the fat raccoon, Matt, not you. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about that. <laughs> 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 ah. Y'all are silly. Y'all are too silly. All right. <clears throat> well, let's wrap this up here. We are uh, taking next week off Memorial Day. Uh, so all our people that have uh, laid it on the line and have passed or just family members, it's a time to reflect. So uh, we will be off next week, kicking off. It's usually Memorial Day is the time to kick off summer, although the weather is going to be, like I said at the top, it's not going to be as nice as it was this weekend. But um, Mike, didn't you just post – on Twitter, seven months till winter or something crazy like that. I will. Yeah, yes, I'm no. counting it down. I'm I mean, I don't. Like I mean, that. someone needs to hear it somewhere. But Tuesday, it's seven months till Christmas. Don't please be quiet. Don't say that. I mean, you mean so that yeah, means you, Eric. You, so Eric, that means it's only like you know four months till the trees got to go up. Yeah, four months, right. probably that's, four weeks. Wow. wow, think about that, bro. <laughs> four weeks, and all of a sudden trees are going up in Eric's house. Man, let me tell you, bro. Yeah. Done. Are we oh, making well. any progress with the pool? Pool. I mean, no, I was talking have, to some people today at the barbecue that I was at, and they're saying there's like a pool shortage. Like, and people are also doing maybe some price gouging. Like this guy, one guy was getting like an estimate to get a pool put in, and just kind of like that kidney shape, you know, design. Yeah. And it was like yeah. twenty twenty grand. Yeah, mine's gonna be about thirty. But what what's going on right now? We're doing the steps that we need to take. Like we just put the new vinyl fence up and all that good stuff. Getting the backyard. We're doing all the stuff up to wow. so far. So so we, are we are we aiming for like summer twenty twenty two? Yeah. Oh, I got a year Absolutely. to get my dad bought in in shape. Then you know, <laughs> I'm in the fat raccoon stage right now. But well, I got a whole, I would, I would, a whole year. I'm coming raccoon. there with my own floaty too. I'm gonna have one hey, of those look. big rubber ducky floaties. Like that's so cool. I won't sink. <laughs> that's cool. Hey man, my my dad bod is. I'm not even worried about it. All I care about is the Jonah bod. That's all that matters. Yeah. I told my wife tonight, very shallow statement that if she had cankles, I would divorce her. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. That's how shallow I am in life. It's a terrible <laughs> thing. Oh, no. What in the hell? <laughs> and, and what was her response? Just shut up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, <laughs> pretty much, just shut up. Yeah, <laughs> I think we because I think uh, we were walking by someone, like we were driving by someone, and the girl oh, had yeah. like you know, uh, sort of like you know, exercise outfit equipment on that you know maybe she shouldn't have been wearing. And, yeah, uh, probably I probably said something again that I probably shouldn't say. I should just use my inner voice and only say it to myself. <laughs> I said, "Good God, if I had to hold on to ham hocks like that, I'd probably divorce you." Jesus my wife, Christ. my wife always tells me, "Like we'll be flipping the channels, and that show six hundred pound life would be all right." She says, "If I ever get that big, would you divorce me?" <laughs> I said, "No, I'd be with you. I just feed you food. You'd be all right." 
She said, please don't divorce me if I ever get that big. I'm like, man. <laughs> what did you say? I'm going to keep feeding you and feeding you? Yeah, I just keep feeding you and feeding you until you die. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot, man. Could you All right, I don't know what's more, I don't know what's worse here. He's gonna fucking kill his no, wife. No, I was just saying divorce, no, cut no, bait. No, listen, <laughs> if, Mike, if you're 600 pounds plus, that means you actually like food, right? That's something you love, right? So I'm just gonna keep feeding her. That's something she likes. I'm gonna feed her. <laughs> here, have some, have some more ice cream. I got yeah. this visual of like Eric just like constantly cooking up burgers. Like it's like burger time over there. Just... Yeah, that's right. Here you go. I'm gonna feed you till you can't get fed no more. That's how I show you I love you, see? You know, it was a great show up until the last two minutes. We should just really <laughs> rewind it and start over the last Just want to know how, I mean, like, if, <laughs> if, if Barbara gets that big, my question is, like, how the fuck am I supposed to fuck you? You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. just slide the fold and stab hey. it and steer? I mean, how yeah. does this work? Hey. It's been a hell of a show, folks. <laughs> we're going to skip, we're going to skip the, everything. <laughs> Thanks, Eric, for coming on. <laughs> feed them, Mike. I'm going to keep feeding them. <laughs> oh, no. I'm pretty sure he just said, I'm going to stab a fold. Pretty... <laughs> yes, yeah, that's what he said. That's just what he said. If I can get the baby powder and spray it on her, find a dry spot. Oh, n- wet spot. <laughs> yeah, the wet spot. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh. Man, all right, Matt. Off the rails. Just, despite my better judgment, do you have any shout outs, plugs? Everyone in chat, thanks for dealing with this stuff and people <laughs> listening that download the show. They're all gone, they've, they've all left. We're actually decent people for the most part. That's right. Video, video games have just corrupted us. Video games did corrupt us. See, they, they, see, all these news agencies are right. GTA, GTA, GTA ruined us. We've been ruined by GTA. So, anyway, thanks everyone for listening, downloading the show, and all that stuff. Very cool. Then all your complaints to uh, someone. Oh, did anybody, before we go, did anybody play uh, Knockout City at all? Yeah, I played it when it was in a beta, the, the whole beta situation. It, it's, it's cool, but it's not nothing that. I mean, it's getting good reviews. Like, I guess they put a lot of work in since then, and people are saying it's really good. Should maybe have yeah. hooked that up for some sort of uh, game night, play some uh, dodgeball. Cool. Yeah. It's Bibbs. cool. Bibbs made it here right at the end, just when we're about to leave. Hello, Bibbs. Yeah. Way, not good. way past Shows that over. time, Bibbs. Yeah. Eric, do you have any parting words? Hey, man, I'm sorry I joined y'all late, you know, but uh, this circus must go on over here, so that's what I do. But, uh, yeah, thanks for y'all being here, man. I have a good time on Sundays when, when you guys are here. Fun. Um We'll take a break oh, next to... week. I'll be, I'll, I'll be back with uh, some bio meeting looks. We'll see. Yeah, how that and that's gonna be the big talk when we get back. Yeah, I did, uh, Bibbs. I did forget that tomorrow is a holiday for you Canadians. Queen Victoria Day. May it be. May it be a, a beautiful, a bountiful holiday. Um, Do you get next presents? Week. Next Monday we'll have off for Memorial Day. Although Eric might be at the job. You dipping into some of that double time holiday pay? Come on, you know it. You know it. Yes. <clears throat> so shout out everybody in chat. We got who we got? Bricko, Maniac, Bibbs, Shownuff. Anybody else I forgot? Probably. Don't know. But thanks all for hanging out, making it a good Sunday night. Uh, again, no show next week. So you got two weeks to catch up on 164. We're creeping up there. We're getting up there. Almost a legitimate podcast. And Eric, we mentioned at the top of the show, oh, nice. Spotify soon will be enabling <laughs> auto transcripts of podcasts. So we're all going to have to uh, practice our pronunciations, maybe some more than others, so that um, the transcription service will actively be able to relay what we're trying to communicate to our listeners. Yeah. I, gotta, I have to start enunciating when I say, I do it constantly. I can't have the robot voice anymore. Can't I can't have the robot. Go. Right. What That's we were right. thinking of doing is testing out the um, terrible topics with Matt and having them transcribe <laughs> it, and then copying the, the the text of the transcription 
and putting it in like Google Translate and having Google Translate read it back to us, like some audio, yeah, like bad, a voicemail bad, or something. It'd be like a game of telephone or something. That would be great. <laughs> and, and just think Spotify is going to translate this last five minutes of the show that we just shit we've yeah, been talking how about. They're talk about. They're going to talk about it's going to say ham and cocks instead of ham hocks. <laughs> At keep feeding her, keep feeding. It's gonna over and over again. Keep feeding her. <laughs> well, that's a lot for you guys to chew on. So here we go. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Enjoy your Memorial Day. Enjoy your long weekend. Canadians, enjoy your holiday yeah. weekend, your Queen Victoria Day, and we'll catch you all later. I hope the Queen gives you lots of gifts underneath the tree tonight. do it constantly bro constantly constantly, constantly. bye all